Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's LT and I've got a small shop in central Utah and I work on custom and high performance trucks and do a little bit of welding along the way. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, help me out and hit that subscribe button because I'm trying to get to 30,000 subscribers by the end of this year and I need your help to make that happen. Today, I'm gonna to be working on some wastegate related plumbing on Ugly Truck, which is the 2000 Silverado 8.1 swap that we're turbocharging. Now, originally the plan was to work on the cold side piping, but it's being a bit of a challenge to get the air into the throttle body because of the angle that it's facing at. That square right there, that kind of represents the hood height and it kind of is hard to show on camera, but as you can see, or guess maybe, the angle is quite sharp where it needs to enter the throttle body. Originally, I was gonna use one of these deals right here, a straight reducing coupler to go from four inch on the throttle body to three and a half inch tube, and then use the aluminum pipe to make up the bend, but that just would be way too high. It puts the top of the pipe somewhere right here, which is about two inches higher than the height of the hood. And I'm not gonna cut a hole in the hood, and I wanna leave my stock hood insulation in place. So I ordered a reducing 45 degree silicone coupler to go from four to three and a half, and those have a pretty tight radius on them and I can cut it short enough where I can get it right on the throttle body where it starts to bend. And I think that'll work just fine, but that won't get here till tomorrow or maybe Saturday. Uh, today's Thursday. So I'm gonna be working on wastegate related stuff today. The wastegate is an important part of any turbocharging system because it controls how much airflow or boost the turbo is gonna produce. And it does that by regulating how much exhaust energy is allowed to spin the turbine, that guy right there. It's basically nothing more than a valve that allows exhaust to either go into or around the turbo. There's a couple parts to most common waste gates. There's a port on the bottom for air pressure. There's a diaphragm in the middle, a spring on top, and another port up here on the very top. And basically how it works is the more pressure you have on the bottom, well, that kind of works against the spring to open the valve and lower your boost. And the more pressure you have on top, that works to close the valve, force more exhaust through the turbine, and raise your boost level. Now, normally, where you get that air pressure from is somewhere right here off the compressor cover, but I didn't want to drill and tap to put a pipe uh, fitting in there. And that's the same reason why I didn't want to put the wastegate right on the turbine housing, like a lot of you suggested that I should. That's because I don't want to modify this turbo at all, because if I ever have to upgrade, I'll have to redo both of those things. Now, admittedly, drilling and tapping the compressor cover is a pretty minor upgrade, but I have a better spot I can put it. Let me show you. Because I'm using an aluminum adapter to go between the V-band on the compressor cover and a three inch standard hose coupling, I figured this would be the perfect place to grab a boost reference line to feed up to the wastegate. Now it is made from aluminum and you could drill and tap directly into it, but it's a little bit thin in my opinion for tapping into it. So it's just more peace of mind to weld on an eighth inch MPT bung. I always do keep a couple of these on hand for projects just like this, and they're pretty simple. They're inexpensive. I think they're like five or seven dollars per. Uh, this one here, this is quarter inch NPT, and they've got a nice little step on the end. Uh, this one is three eighths inch NPT. It's a little bigger, and this is for the inlet air temp sensor that I'm going to be running in the driver's side charge pipe whenever I get it done. Now, I'll cherry pick, I'll show you the best spot of the weld, but I'm kind of proud of this. It looks a lot better than my previous attempts down there. Uh, so we're getting a little bit better. And then I did install just this 90 degree elbow to go to a quarter inch hose barb. As far as machine setup goes, a lot of you have actually asked questions about that. So on this go around, I was running 65% electrode negative, 
which is a little bit less cleaning action, but I figured because I'm welding a billet part on, it's a little bit less dirty, less porous than say a cast part. So 65% EN, I was running 100 hertz on the frequency, and then I think I had 155 amps for overall machine power. And that seemed to work out pretty good. So now I can install that back on the turbo for good, which means I got to put the O-ring in. I'm not going to be installing any kind of a boost controller right now because I really don't have any need to be able to raise the boost over the baseline spring pressure setting. Now, if I was going to be running, say, E85 or race gas or some sort of fuel with a different octane from my normal fuel, then yeah, I could raise the boost a little bit more. Or if maybe, you know, my base spring pressure just wasn't quite enough and I wanted a little bit more boost than the next spring up, then maybe a, a boost controller would be warranted. But for now, I'm just running off base spring pressure. And it's important to note the way that I'm showing you, the way that I have my line set up, you're never going to be able to use a boost controller to lower the amount of boost. That's all based off of the spring. Now, there is one line, the boost reference line, that comes from the compressor cover to the bottom of the dome. And right now, the way it's hooked up, whenever we come into boost, it's going to help open the gate. Now, if you wanted to raise the boost level, you could use a bleed off style regulator or boost controller, which will go in this line here and it lets a little bit of air out, which provides a little less force opening the gate, which will raise your boost level. Now, the other style, it would tee into this line and it would provide a slight amount of pressure on the top of the dome, keeping the gate forced shut longer, which again will raise the boost level. But like I said, that's not for me, not now anyway. So. The next thing I am going to do, though, is I need to work on the wastegate dump tube and see if I can start to get it recirculated into the downpipe. It took about an hour's worth of time and probably a dozen or so trips back and forth between the engine bay and the workbench, but I've got the fit up on this merge exactly where I want it to be. And that's because I was doing it with nothing more than an angle grinder with a rock disc, a flap wheel, a cutoff disc, and a hand file. 
Now, the reason why this transition does have such a weird funky angle on it is because it's what I would consider to be a double compound bend. You've got this curve that's leading into the curve of the downpipe. Now, I'll show you right there where I marked it. That's kind of where this is going to go in. And if I can get this lined up in exactly the right spot, right there, you can see how well that thing's going to fit together. And it was definitely worth the effort because that thing is going to TIG weld together perfectly. Now, I can't do any welding just yet because I'm waiting on one more thing. And that's the bellows that's going to go in this pipe right here just to allow for a little bit of thermal expansion and movement. But when it shows up, I'm going to weld the bellows to the V-band, trim this off, weld this to the other end of the bellows, and then I can mark the final position of the hole in the downpipe, cut the hole, tack weld it, bring it out on the bench and finish weld it, and then I can connect the downpipe to the cat back, which will finish up the exhaust for good. The next thing that I want to take care of is notching the inner fender liner to fit around the downpipe. Now, I showed you guys how I built this last time, and a lot of you guys were concerned about the lack of clearance that I had between this corner of the downpipe and the tire. Now, there's a lot going on here, first of all, that's a four inch downpipe, a two and a half inch up pipe, and the exhaust manifold that all have to fit between the engine and the frame rail. And remember, this is not an LS, this is a big block Chevy, so there is a lot going on in not a lot of space. Now, a lot of you have actually suggested that I just take the pipe and smash it in with a hammer in that spot to fix the clearance issue. And yeah, I have seen the episode of Engine Masters where they smash the headers with a hammer and they put it on the dyno and they proved that it actually didn't lose any horsepower. And theoretically, that's fine, but I spent way too much time on that downpipe to just smash it in with a hammer. But I do have a solution if it's a big enough problem. What I will do is I'll come in here and I'll cut an oval shaped section out of the corner wherever the clearance is. I'll take that scrap away and then I'll flatten it out, resize it and weld it back onto the pipe. That'll be a lot more elegant solution and it'll essentially accomplish the same exact thing. But remember, the only time that the tire is ever going to rub is if number one, I have my bigger 265, 65, 18 tires on here. Number two, if I'm turned all the way to the right, and I don't mean just close to the right, I mean all the way to the right, holding it against the stop, and then combine that with hitting a big bump to stuff the tire up in there. Now, like I said, if it does become an issue, I will take care of it. I'll modify the pipe exactly like I showed you, but even after I go through all that work, well, the inner fender liners still aren't gonna fit because remember how much stuff we have in that little space. So they gotta be notched either way, so let's take care of it. The cutoff wheel makes pretty quick work of the plastic inner fender linage. You just got to be careful not to cut too much at once. So I'm using the same method that I did when I was merging the tube for the wastegate into the downpipe. Mark a little bit, cut it, check the fit, and come back and cut some more if you need to. And I really like how it looks with the inner fender liner installed because you see the downpipe in there and it just kind of lets you know there's something a little bit different about this truck. And then if you look closer, you can kind of see the intercooler tube poking out there down to the front. Also, it's nice to have that extra layer of protection from, you know, rocks or dust or dirt, or if for some reason I get caught in a rainstorm, it'll be nice to have that inner fender liner in place. Now, this is where I'm going to have to sign off for this week, but I got to say thank you for watching all the way to the end. I do appreciate you guys. And if you haven't already, help me out and hit that subscribe button. 
The next upload that you should see for me, well, I'll be working on the driver's side charge pipe because just a few minutes ago, I actually got that silicone coupler in that I'm waiting on. So I'll get this video edited and we'll get on to the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm LT.